release of the Alto Parisi lineup is a serious, serious release. The dried lava cap here shows us all where this one is going to bring us. And I can't wait to talk about that imagery in the upcoming review. Galtieri describes Taroni as a scent that evokes the roots and volcanic land surrounding Mount Vesuvius. All you need to know is this scent is straight up fire. <laughs> Otto Parisi, you're up to bat. Let's get to the review. YouTube Friggins family. Welcome to another Robes 08 fragrance review. Today I'm putting my nose on the house of Arto Parisi. And to note, this is the first full-fledged fragrance review on my channel from this brand. And we're going to start it off with the banger, which is called Taroni. Now before I get into the meat and potatoes of the fragrance review, please take the time to subscribe down below. Hit that bell so you can keep tabs on yours truly and be one of the first to check out my new content. I'm also all over social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, also all under my YouTube handle, Robes08. You can go check me out on all social media. Talking about social media, I do have a Facebook page, but I also have a Facebook group called Fragrance Guru Nation. We're up to 17,600 members and we're waiting for you to join us today. Now, before I get into chapter one of this fragrance review, I'd like to thank my partner in crime, FragranceX.com for this fragrance right here, Taroni from Arto Parisi. They have the whole Arto Parisi line on FragranceX.com. Um, it is a line that I'm super intrigued with. This is actually the first bottle that I got from FragranceX. I actually have a second bottle from the brand and I'm looking for third and fourth. It is a brand that I'm really enjoying. Um, if you don't know, um, the nose behind NASA Nasamato uh, did develop this brand too. So if you like Nasamato products, you may want to delve into Arto Parisi. Um, I do have a coupon code on FragranceX. So um, it is my channel name, Robes08. So if you do go into FragranceX, you can punch in that coupon code and you will receive 15% off on this fragrance. And of course, anything else that you put in your little cart. So Let's start chapter one. Let's talk about the scent itself. So let's go into under the hood to take a look at a little bit of stats, release date, concentration, the nose behind this particular release. So let's get into release date. It's a fairly new release. It's not their newest release, but a fairly new release from the brand. It was a 2017 release. La concentration of the fragrance is parfum. Uh, the nose behind this uh, fragrance is Alessandro Galtieri, of course, a crazy nose, and uh, the nose behind uh, the fame brand, Naso Mato. So I just actually did a fragrance review. Uh, one of my 2020 fragrance reviews was on Black Afghano from his Naso Mato line. A great scent, one of my all-time favorites. And this pinches a little bit from Black Afghano, so we're going to get into that. So let's get into the notes of uh, Taroni. And uh, just like the Nassau Mato lineup, Galtieri does not. Um, he wants us to, he'll give us a picture. He'll paint a picture of what the fragrance is uh, supposed to evoke. But as far as uh, a note breakdown, he doesn't share anything to us. So uh, up top, um, a lot of websites are saying there's earthy notes. Um, in the mid, there's spicy notes. And in the back end, there's musk. As far as keynotes to my nose, so again, I'm up to my uh, imagination and, and what I've smelt in Taroni here. I'm going to say the keynotes to my nose when smelling this particular fragrance. Incense is a big player in here. Patchouli is a big player in here and also some oud. So it's gonna be a dark one. And anybody that likes dark scents, <laughs> like me, you're gonna like this one. Now, welcome finally to meat and potato time of the fragrance review. This is my favorite part of the fragrance review is me describing 
through all my wearings of Taroni, uh, what I got in the opening the heart and uh, of course the base of the particular fragrance. And Taroni, I put a pretty big dent in this fragrance. Um, it's not like I've owned this fragrance for 10 plus years, like a, a black Afghan or something like that. I've owned this for just a few years now. And uh, it, it really is a restrictive scent. I would say uh, I would only wear it really in the fall and winter. I'm gonna get into that, but um, really, I'm absolutely loving this scent. So let's get into the opening. I'm gonna spray the back of my hand. I am living with this fragrance uh, today. It is my scent of the day. And I have the dry down here. Oh, beautiful uh, <laughs> woody backbone. Uh, one on the back of my hand and one for the fragrance community for all of you. And the opening of Toroni immediately hits me with woods. There's lots of woods in here. Scorched earth, which is through the marketing imagery of this fragrance, I am smelling that and tons of smoke. So really an intriguing, complex scent. So picture this, Taroni gives me earth, roasted nuts. There's a nutty aspect, um, almost a dry nutty aspect to this fragrance. Very interesting, hardwoods, conifers, ash, smoke and some spices. The picture of being near a volcano is the perfect imagery for Taroni as it immediately shows me all aspects. It's complex, it's dark as a scent. Let me start to describe you this opening because it's, it's completely gorgeous. So getting to know Taroni must start with Galtieri's Nasomato brand. Think black Afghano, less herbal, less green, meets the woody backbone of Duro. With an interlude man splashed into uh, the fragrance, and that's of course from Amouage. These are all heavy hitters in our fragrance community and Taroni fits the bill. Put it with all those heavy hitters, because it is a big boy in the fragrance community. It opens with earthy qualities. That's the first thing that hits my nose. Um, really what comes to my mind when smelling this fragrance is dirty hands, um, earthy, soil, very dark. Um, now, I, I know a lot of people, if you've smelt Figment Man from Amouage, um, there is some earthy sense that really is just emphasizing um, soil, dark earth. Um, this is toned down just a bit. Um, and you know, like a Figment Man, if you like soil based fragrances, like you're grabbing a piece of soil and you're smelling it, Figment Man is right up your alley. But this um, steals a page of that a little bit. Um, not as strong, not as pungent, but you can feel the earth and it's very um, dry, it's not wet. Um, it really is almost clay-like. Um, it really is like almost, a, a, I don't wanna say red earth, but it does. Um, it's very much soily. The earthy tones are just part of the puzzle. Smoke joins it. We got some birch and some incense here, giving it a smoky, feel again a big part of the puzzle but it's not just a smoky scent you know what i mean um there's a lot of incense based fragrances it's a lot of smoke a lot a lot of it here it's it's nice it has a beautiful smoky tone but it's part of the puzzle it also has a roasted nutty quality here which is actually rather unique in the opening um and it makes me think of actually roots it, it kind of makes me think of vetiver root a little bit um, you have many aspects from Black Afghano getting stolen here. There's a couple pages from that novel that I can tell Gultiati did his thing here. The oud, the incense, the vetiver, they're all here, but they're blended differently with different players, um, different chairs, um, really interesting combo. Um, all in all, that introduction, it's nice. And I'm not done yet. I'm not done. <laughs> Now, the one thing that sneaks up on you in this scent is the spices. These were completely missed by me until way back into my testing um, phase of this particular fragrance. And again, kids, whoever wants to be a fragrance reviewer on YouTube, um, it's always great to be the first to review a fragrance because you're gonna get a lot of hits. However, the review itself, it hurts the review, right? Anybody that's been great at their craft, Michael Jordan, right? You keep doing repetition. You keep trying stuff out and you're gonna get better at what you do. Same thing with fragrance reviewing on YouTube. 
The longer I take, the more I try out not to be the first one on YouTube to do it, I am going to start discovering small nuances that I may have missed if I would have shot this video a year and a half ago when my bottle was a little fuller. So the spices, what do they remind me of? Well, they kind of remind me, and I do a lot of uh, barbecuing. I, I, I own actually a smoker, um, and I love to uh, put smoked paprika on my ribs. So it really does remind me of smoked paprika, meats kind of like some saffron, some cardamom here. The spices kind of make you think of red, um, perhaps uh, giving you that imagery of the red lava taking um, everything down in its path. Um, it is a small nuance in, uh, of course, Toroni, uh, but it is one that once you've discovered it, you're like, oh, there it is, there it is. And it keeps um, hitting your nose. Um, they're strong, yet they're subdued a little bit. So it did take me some time to go, oh, look at the spices in here. Nice trick, great trick. Now the huge part of Taroni has to be the earth and the smoke. That's the major portions of this of fragrance, but the woods, oh, the woods in here, those woods, they're a huge part of Taroni. Um, I detect several woods, and I don't know if it's just my nose playing tricks on me, but I smell oud. I smell cedar, I smell guyac wood, cypress, sandalwood, um, even ebony wood in this fragrance. It feels, it's very, I wouldn't say as woody as duro because this has more to it. You know, you got some smoke and you got some earthy qualities here and some woody qualities. So there's a lot of spices. Um, there's a lot going on. Um, they play such a huge part in this fragrance. However, never overpower the overall theme. And that's one thing about this uh, fragrance and Galtiati does this a lot. Um, and I like this about a lot of perfumiers, the ones that are very good at what they do is that you're gonna have a lot of different nuances, the complexities there, and it keeps someone like me very much interested in the fragrance. But I, I continue to discover things the more I wear this particular fragrance. So there's a mild sweetness in here too. Um, I know that Black Afghano has some sweetness to it um, that people hardly talk about. Here too, there's some sweetness, which also reminds me of its use in BA. The opening of Taroni is deep, it's complex, it's dark, and at times rather ruthless, um, depending on the wear. It depends where you are in your journey. You know, I like my big, bold fragrances. You can't scare me with a big, bold fragrance. Honestly, you really can't. Um, I'm one of those, but when I do meet something like this, a little more challenging, um, I'm used to this kind of stuff. And I feel like when I get to meet fragrances like this, <laughs> I, I love them. And I love talking about them, especially the complexity. These are the type of reviews that gets my juices flowing. <laughs> now onto the deeper heart and base of this particular fragrance. Again, a, a lot of the stuff that I just mentioned was a lot more of the heart and introduction of the fragrance. Um, Taroni does not move much from what I've explained. To be quite honest, it starts losing some of its interesting parts and keeps its backbone as some of Galtiotti's scents tend to do. Um, they really start stripping a little bit less, um, more into, of course, the deeper dry down. It keeps the woods. The roasted nutty aspect take is very much still there. Smoke is down to a whisper, so you lose a lot of that smoke. The earthy qualities are still a big part, and some patchouli adds more of its personality here. So a little more green. The vetiver has its place too here, but the woods are your main player. You're going to get a lot of woods here in Taroni, more into the back end. I felt the kayak and the sandalwood were the main culprits here in the deeper dry down of the fragrance. Overall, Taroni is a very interesting, complex, opening that brings me right in the middle of the action near vegetation that took a beating from an actual volcano erupting. The dry down is less abrasive. It smooths out quite a bit to an excellent backbone of a fragrance. Overall, I was very much entertained. I love the complexity of this fragrance. It's dark. Um, it really did not disappoint. As a Galtiotti fragrance, it's actually one of his better ones. Um, so now let's get into the ratings of uniqueness and of course the scent of chapter one of this fragrance review. So the uniqueness, I'm going to give it eight bottles out of 10. I felt um, there is some great imagery here. It really brought me to that imagery, but taking off a few points here to people that are familiar with Galtiati's work.
Um, you may say, oh, it steals a lot from Black Afghan, or I'd rather have BA than this. Um, I don't think so. It steals a lot from it. A few pages here and there. Um, I think there's a place for both fragrances, very much less herbal, more woody here. Um, I, I felt Taroni has its 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 place. It's very much different than Black Afghano. So anybody that's telling you they're the same, hell, nope. As far as the scent itself, I'm going to give it nine bottles out of 10. Very close to a perfect 10 here. Um, nothing to hate here for me. Um, I really liked it from uh, step one right down to the end. Um, testing this fragrance, as you can see, was a treat. I loved uh, testing this fragrance and I'm very much excited to put this on my channel um, as my first Alto Parisi a fragrance review. This is one of those that I feel like I'm going to continue to wear after the review. Definitely. 100%. This is a great one. Now into chapter two, which is performance and feedback. Let's get into the sprays. Um, how many sprays do I wear with this fragrance? Um, I go with my regular one on the chest, two on the neck. So one here and one here and then two on the arms. And uh, usually this is good for fall. Three sprays, I'm good. I will go five in these Canadian winters. So I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt, as you can see. I'll go right here, you know, pulse points right here. Why not? It'll get warmer. Um, so five sprays for these Canadian winters is best. Three for fall. Um, they are very strong and you'll see this in, in performance. Let's get into that longevity. Longevity on this bad boy, 10 bottles out of 10. Um, nine to 12 plus hours with this fragrance. Um, it really does last on my skin. Um, I really like the longevity on this one. Projection, nine bottles out of 10. Bold power in this fragrance, very much beastly. Um, as you can see, she lasts and she does push on my skin. As far as compliment factor goes, um, this is where it's going to take a hit. Now, I've worn quite a bit of this fragrance. I'm going to give it five bottles out of 10 for compliment factor. Um, I would have to say it's a mid-tier here. I've had some good. And surprisingly, for a bolder scent, it's done well for me. But I'm not going to say it's one of those fragrances that um, a lot of other designer fragrances or some niche fragrances. It's, it's a bolder scent. And of course, the noses around you uh, would have to like this kind of DNA. As more into the dry down, it smooths out quite a bit. And you'll see some people that really like um, woody-based fragrances. They'll like this one uh, on you. Trust me on that one. Now let's move on to chapter three, which is versatility. The versatility of this fragrance. Let's take a look at age range. Um, I would recommend, again, any age can wear any fragrance, but I, I want to give my recommendation because a lot of people do ask in my videos who can wear this type of fragrance. I would have to say 20 plus. Get rid of the teens. Um, I feel, again, if your taste is like this and you're a teenager, there's nothing wrong with that, but I would say 20 plus um, unisex. Whew. I'd like to meet the woman that can wear this. Comment down below if you are, because damn. <laughs> Seasons. Um, again, I, I mentioned it earlier in the fragrance review and I have to say that it really does work well, of course, in the cooler weather here in Canada. I would have to say fall and winter are the best uh, seasons for it. Um, I, I love wearing this, uh, of course, during those seasons. I've tried it in the summer. Spring overcast works. Summer night also works, but um, really that versatility is going to take a little bit of a hit. It's a darker scent. It's a bolder scent. Um, so you don't want to gas people out with this uh, fragrance. If you wear less, like my three spray method or two spray method, you're fine. Um, night or day, uh, this is a big, bold fragrance. I can wear it casually during the day, but I feel like just because of its DNA, it's more of a nighttime scent. I love wearing this one at night. Um, occasions, Taroni would be more of a casual scent. Um, I'm not going to dress this thing up. It's not a dress up type of fragrance. It is a leather jacket, white t-shirt, black t-shirt and jeans, ripped jeans, black jeans, um, something like that. Um, uh, it's just casual use for me as something a little bit big, bold, and we'll introduce you into the room. Uh, so versatility, as far as the bottle score, I have to give this one four bottles out of 10. Um, I feel versatility is not at strong point. Um, it is restricted, but for someone like myself and you are watching my videos and you're interested in this fragrance, uh, you'll find some versatility out of it. You know, I can wear it at nighttime in every season personally, lay, lay off on the sprays, depending where you're going. If you're going outside, you're fine. Three sprays, you're good summer night. Go at it. Have at her. Moving on to the next chapter, which is value. Let's take a look at that with niche fragrances. Of course, value is super, super important. Let's take a look at it. Bottle sizes available. What you see in my hand here, the 1.7 ounce, 
is what you're getting. That's it. That's all they got. Uh, pricing, $200 USD. Um, so she's a pricey little devil. However, looking at the NASA Matter line versus this line, you're getting more juice for your buck. Just an FYI. It, availability, no, this is not discontinued. So it is readily available in stores. So for pricing versus quality, as far as the score goes, I'd have to give it eight bottles out of 10. Um, you get more uh, milliliters from the crazy nose here than his NASA model line. So I have to give it a really good score. Um, it is a really good thing. Um, even though it, it, if this would come, Toroni, if it came into NASA model bottles, 30 mils uh, for, I think they're 180 USD now, um, I would still buy this. This is a very good scent. So I'm getting actually a lot more uh, for my money here and it's well worth it. Taroni is a good one. Now to close things up, I'm going to talk about some positives to take away, some negatives to take away from the fragrance. I like to give the, the good and bad of, of every single fragrance. They all have some setbacks to them just because this is an overly positive fragrance review from yours truly. I love this scent. I still want to let you guys know some, some negatives and of course my final thoughts and my final score. So positives to take away, let's start with the good. There's a lot of good in this fragrance. Excellent woody, earthy, spicy, smoky scent, uh, complexities right there. Uh, it's daring, it's dark, it's very, very good as a scent. Um, if you're familiar with Galtieri's work, you're gonna like this, especially if you're familiar with Nasamato and you're moving on to Arto Parisi, you got a lot to discover, first of all, like me, and I'm happy about this. So if you like the Black Afghanos, the Duros, the Pardons, um, Baranda, uh, all those fragrances, move on to Auto Parisi and come check out the line. Very good line. Negatives to take away from Toroni. I'd have to say, again, if you're not familiar with the nose, um, it may be a little strange for some, a little too much for some. Um, the pricing itself per mil is a little high. Uh, the dry down does lose some of its appeal. So some, some fragrance heads may say, like people that are in the journey like me, they're like, oh, I got a little boring at the end. I didn't feel that way, but I could see somebody that's really into their fragrance journey and they want to be entertained the whole time. This one lost a little bit of steam in the back end, but I was still interested, especially with the, the lot of woods and the patchouli amping up a little bit. Um, I really liked uh, the whole picture of it, but there's some negatives for you. So my final thoughts, my overall thoughts on Toroni is Galtieri releases always get hit negatively in our fragrance community uh, because he works a lot with synthetics. And again, um, it, it has a, a negative vibe. A lot of people like to uh, chomp on Galtieri and say, oh, he's using synthetics where most of the in industry is. So it's not just him, by the way. Um, and of course, the lack of imagery as he's stealing a lot from his Nassau Mato line. So a lot of people are poo-pooing on, on Galtieri's work here from Alto Parisi. They're saying, oh, it's too close to uh, Black Afghano, things like that. Honestly, F those people. <laughs> this is an excellent release on its own. I don't care if Black Afghano was never made, it would make this even better, but they're not even damn close. I'm almost a converted Alto Parisi guy. Um, I, <laughs> I'm very close to saying Alto Parisi's lineup is better than Nasso Matos. However, I don't have that much experience with this line yet. I'm still discovering, so I'm not going to go that far yet. But this one is on par with a Black of Gano, a Pardon, and a Dura. It's right there. This release is right in my wheelhouse as far as artistic, wearable, in cold weather, challenging, complex, um, everything that I absolutely love. Bravo, Galtieri. Um, uh, this is a very successful, I blind bought this uh, on Fragrance X way back when, uh, a few years back. And um, yeah, no regrets, zero regrets. And I have my second bottle of Alto Parisi actually uh, now in my collection going for a third. So that goes to an overall score. Torone, as far as an overall score as a fragrance, I would have to give it a very respectable nine bottles out of 10. Now, what would I recommend for you out there? Now, does this sound interesting to you? You're at the end of this video and you're like, man, this sounds like something that I would really like. Now I'm gonna tell you, buy, try, or pass, buy. <laughs> buy. Um, this is a, a um, I don't regret it. It's a great first purchase from the line for me. 
Um, and it made me super interested in the rest of the lineup. And I, there's no regret, zero regrets. I love it. And I want to discover more from the brand just because off of this fragrance right here, really excellent stuff. Now that you know my take on Taroni, have you smelt it? I'd like to hear your comments down below. Good, bad, and the ugly. I, I just want to see them. I want to see who uh, agrees with me. Do you think it's a 9 out of 10? Do you think it's actually a 10 out of 10? Uh, do you think it's a great fragrance, a poor fragrance? Any reasons why I'd love for you all to share with the community. So anybody that clicks on this fra uh, fragrance review, and there's not too many fragrance reviews on, these, on this brand. So uh, the more comments below, the better it is for the community. And I will leave you with a few takes from my social media as I asked everyone uh, their thoughts on Taroni. And you'll see those at the back end of this video. So stay tuned as you're going to see a whole bunch of comments from perhaps Facebook, uh, YouTube, um, Instagram, and Twitter. So keep it tuned in. And as always, a greater pour fragrance will make a lasting impression. Choose your scent wisely. Thanks for watching, YouTube. Have a good day.